Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command and Mark Zickery of Star Trek. Uh, New Voyages, Phase 2, Star Trek, uh, the Next Generation, and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. So uh, there you go, pretty exciting. And I'm going to be talking about Star, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Episode 4 today. Uh, and you know, some people might wonder why I do these videos when I'm walking. Here's the reason. Let me, let me give you a, a little bit of a, a view of my, of my day. This is a Sunday, beautiful day in Los Angeles. It started with me get, getting together with Elaine and um, two of our producer uh, personnel, uh, Massimiliano Trevis and uh, Andrea Miralia over breakfast and planning our shooting schedule on Space Command and also Sweet Haven for, uh, for June and July and, and laying that out and figuring out all the, all the twists and turns. I brought some things I'd acquired. It's gonna be one, on one of the sets. It's gonna look really, really cool. And then um, I went to a swap meet and, and found a, a, a cockpit, a, a, a canopy to a T-33 jet uh, fighter and bought that because we can use it for the Shrikes on Space Command and they'll look really cool. And, uh, and, and you know, and so forth. I'm, you know, they're delivering the, the canopy shortly, so I have to be there when it's delivered. And also, you know, we're doing all the other stuff that we're doing around Space Command and all the other projects. So, um, so uh, now I'm walking, I'm taking my dog to the park, my dogs to the park, Rudy and Eve. But I wanted to talk about Star Trek Strange New Worlds Episode 4. So far, they're doing a very good job. It, it does seem very much like the old Star Trek, the original Star Trek. Uh, for those who haven't seen uh, Star Trek episodes that begin and end, uh, you know, in one hour. These are well structured, well told. The visuals are great. The the sets and costumes are great. The acting, uh, the cast is very very solid, and uh, these are stories well well told. I was mentioning to someone uh, today that they're sort of like A minus compared to the original Star Trek. It's they haven't yet done a City on the Edge of Forever or you know, a Wrath of Khan or some of the great Star Trek episodes or stories or films. You know, they haven't had that great profound one, like Far Beyond the Stars on DS9, which I came up with uh, and uh, Ira Bear helped uh, uh, bring into the world. And, uh, but, uh, but, but this episode was like a very, very Star Trek kind of episode. Um, it reminded me of uh, Balance of Terror, which was the first season Star Trek episode that, um, that introduced the Romulans, and that was kind of like two submarines fighting each other. It was like The Enemy Below, which was a very famous um, submarine movie with like a German sub-commander fighting a, an American sub-commander and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kurt Jurgens, but um, I think Robert Mitchum also. But, uh, but also it's, it's a, you know, directly referencing Arena, which is an original season one Star Trek episode uh, written by Gene L. Kuhn, I believe. And the funny part about that, that's the episode that introduced the Gorn. And it was the only time we saw, or even I think heard about the Gorn during all three seasons of the original Star Trek. It's, uh, the fun part was that once Gene L. Kuhn wrote the script, and I believe once they even shot it, he suddenly remembered that he had accidentally ripped off a short story he would read years earlier, which was a short story called Arena by Frederick Brown, one of the great science fiction and mystery writers. And uh, so he contacted Frederick Brown and, and said what, what, what a smart producer will say, which was, oh, um, we uh, are thinking, we want to adapt your story into the Star Trek episode. Can we purchase the rights to adapt your story? And Frederick Brown said, yes, of course, because obviously they wouldn't say, well, we've already shot it and you have us over a barrel uh, in terms of negotiations. But, uh, and so all was well. You know, Frederick Brown's story was about a, a human who has to be put in competition against an alien and so forth. So, um, so it, it came out well, very well. The, the Gorn costume was sort of fun and goofy and cool and ridiculous all at the same time, which is true of various things that the original Star Trek did. So in one of the later Star Trek series, I think it was Enterprise, but don't quote me, they actually did an episode where they brought back the Gorn, and in this case they were entirely uh, CG, and it really didn't look good, it really didn't work, they didn't look like the Gorn from the original Star Trek. Um, and you know, and, and it's a challenge because the one thing about the Gorn that was great in the, uh, in the first season of the original Star Trek was it was physical, it was physically there. And yes, it looked like a guy in a suit, very much so, but it was, uh, you know, Kirk could, you know, be menaced by it and it could lumber toward him and so on and so forth. So uh, in this episode of Strange New Worlds, they wisely don't show the, show the Gorn, they just show Gorn, they just show their ship, but um, we'll see what they ultimately do down the road. Now this episode basically ran three 
Jeopardy plot lines, more or less, or you could say three and a half. Uh, the, the, the overarching thing is that the Enterprise is under attack by three Gorn ships. It's uh, left sort of dead-ish in the water, and it goes into the Matara Nebula, so it can't be detected. Oops, no, that's Wrath of Khan. <laughs> it goes on to, into a cloud. Uh, yeah, there's a black dwarf, and there's it's orbiting a... Um, black hole. Now, this is also, by the way, one of my technical notes, because the navigator says, how big a black hole? Really, what she should have said was how massive a black hole, because that's the, the um, key piece of information, because the, 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 the mass of the black hole determines the gravitational pull and so on and so forth. So, um, be that as it may. So, essentially, you have La'an, who's, you know, Khan's descendant, and in a, in a storyline pretty much with, with Pike and with um, Spock, you have number one getting wounded and having a, a story with, you know, Nurse Chapel and Dr. Mabenga, and you have uh, Uhura trapped in engineering with a uh, wounded, you know, Andorian engineer guy, whatever his name is, and, uh, you know, Point Nuth or whatever. And, uh, and so, th so the storylines work, they work, but, um, and they're fun, and they're sort of trying to show a little bit about each character, and, you know, and all, that's all well and good. The challenge is, when you watch this show, you say, okay, who cares about whom? Who's got an existing friendship or relationship with whom? You know, and, and, and a great test on Star Trek is if you take any of the current Star Trek series and you say, if it were a next-gen episode or if it were a TOS, original Star Trek episode, would this story work? Because, for instance, in the original Star Trek, if Spock got wounded to a point where he might die and he's in sick bay, Kirk would be notified about this, Kirk would be upset about it, Kirk would hurry down there as soon as he had a moment where he wasn't having to save the crew. There would be a connection, because they've established her as a friend and sort of sounding board in the previous episodes of Strange New Worlds, but, not, but they don't do that. Instead, he's interacting with La'an, and then, and then she and Spock take a shuttlecraft, and, and they go, and he has this Vulcan mind meld to unlock memories that she has, and then she sees into his mind and sees that he has a sister that he lost. And it's like, <sighs> that doesn't have emotional weight. And because you went 50 years uh, without ever mentioning Spock's sister. Yes, Spock had a brother, Lawrence Luck Luckenbull, Luckenbill in Star Trek V, but after that uh, misguided movie, they never mentioned that brother again, as far as I can tell. And, uh, and he certainly was never had, never had a, a human sister. So, uh, you know, so that sort of kind of, uh, it doesn't have gravitas. It doesn't have emotional weight because that seemed like something they did just kind of to, again, as I've said before, move the pieces around, push things together. So, so overall, it's a good episode, it's an episode I liked, it's a strong episode, I like the actors, um, but I think as they start to develop relationships, they have to honor the continuity of those relationships and not just kind of play them when they're convenient in a given episode and then, you know, and then not. You know, I mean, McCoy and Spock and Kirk, it was very clear who those characters were. And you know, much as I like Ethan Peck, he has not a great Spock moment yet. I think he's very good. I like him. I'm glad to see him. He's certainly the most buff, buff Spock ever. I mean, you know, we never saw Leonard Nimoy in his underwear, for God's sake. But, but I think, I want to see where they're going to go with this Spock. It's a little tricky because he's younger. He's not gone where we've seen Spock go as a character. Uh, but I think there's a lot of room for growth in that character and the way he's written. Um, anyway, that's about it for now. Overall, I liked the episode. I found it entertaining. It's, it's gorgeous to look at, though it may be a little too visually busy. There's so much to look at on that Enterprise set, and they're doing um, lens flare all over the place that sometimes it's a little hard to know where your eye is directed because it's got so much light and movement and detail. But, but this is, you know, not really a big deal because it's still gorgeous, a gorgeous show, and, and it's so much. It's like, compared to the, uh, the other Star Trek series, Discovery and Picard, this one is so close to being on the money and so close to being a good show um, and hopefully a great show ultimately that um, everything else is, you know, minor, minor, minor quibbles. So anyway, that's it for now. So we'll talk soon. Uh, subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi. Uh, ding the, the like button and uh, make sure you get notifications and, 
etc. You know, tell your friends, spread the word. Uh, the more people we have, the better everything goes. And uh, if you haven't watched World Wolf in Time, the George Takei Star Trek episode here on Mr. Sci-Fi, just it's on the landing page. Check it out. You'll really like it. And uh, the first hour of Space Command is here as well. And that's it for now. Talk soon. Bye, guys.